This is the Ashland Planning Board meeting on September 23rd, 2020. Uh, we are, due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, the governor issued emergency order number 12 that waived the location requirement of public officials at a public meeting. This meeting will be conducted electronically the, uh, via our Zoom connection, which was posted on the agenda uh, in the town office and in the post office and on the Ashland website. So I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6.50 after a delay with connections. That happens sometimes. Uh, roll call, Kathleen DeWolf. Present. Paula Hancock. Present. And Mardine Badger is present. Okay, uh, minutes of September 2nd. <clears throat> we'll take a look at those. And I would like to uh, see how, let's see, where is it? It's the second, a third bullet point down on the first um, page, page. What page? First page. First third page. Bullet point. Okay. The southern portion of the property has a small sliver. Mm -hmm. Sliver seems to diminish. Be like a okay. That small. maybe we should have the southern area of the property has a small portion. Portion. portion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds fine. Okay. And the same thing with the second half yes. of that. Yeah, that bullet. The northern portion of the property also has a small portion. Correct. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Any other changes? Um, I think there was one more. Let me see. Uh, maybe not. Nope. nope. I guess that was it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I need a motion. Make the motion to accept the minutes as amended. The minutes of September twenty, uh, September second, two thousand twenty, okay. as amended. Okay, and a second. Second. Okay, from Paula. Okay, roll call vote. Kathleen DeWolf. Aye. Paula Hancock. Aye. And Mardine Badger. Aye. That approves the September 2nd, 2020 minutes of the planning board. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, uh, the draft of the excavation regulations that we've been working on. Uh, Paula did note one error that I'm glad she caught on page nine. Uh, Number four, there's the word three crossed out and the word two following it. So we need to, to delete the word three that's already crossed out. Section nine? Uh, page nine, okay. uh, section 12, Roman numeral 12, A4, down towards the bottom of the page. Okay. Oh, 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 all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I see it. So we'll delete the word three that okay. is already crossed out. Yeah, and we'll leave okay. the word two there. Yeah, okay. yeah, that okay. corresponds with our, um, any comments? What else do we have left to, to uh, decide on this? Uh, no, I don't think anything else at this point uh, that we need to decide. We have not done the application form. I wanna wait on that until we're ready to go with the text of the regulation. So I, 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 the text would be ready to send for review. To I think I think we're ready to send it to Susan Slack at LRPC. And her. then when she, when we get it back from her, then mm -hmm. we send it to town legal. Yes, yes. Okay. And she may have some suggestions okay. to include something or exclude something or whatever. Um, so I think I, I think at this point, if you're all agreeable. We can send this on to Susan for her, uh, Susan Slack for her comments. I, I agree. So. I, Any, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Any particular questions you want to forward to her mm. about the about the general regulations? I don't have any. Okay. I don't think I have any either. It it seems to be. Um, 
all oh, sections yeah. of yeah. importance are, are covered mm -hmm. within the yeah. within the regulations. Consider yeah. what we started with. <laughs> It's a lot more than what we started with, yes. And we eliminated swaths, we added mm -hmm. yeah. quite a bit. So Yes, we did. Yes. And basically okay. a new document. Yeah. So I will send that um Su Su uh, Susan McLeod or I will send it off to Susan Slack at LRPC. Okay. And we'll 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 uh, wait for comments from her. After that after it comes back from her, we'll look at her, any of her suggestions or comments and do what we need to do with those. Um, and yes, we would send it to legal also. In the meantime, because we have a potential case coming up that started, it is going to start with the zoning board. We will also in the meantime, probably Susan, Susan McLeod and I will take a look compare our old or current regulations with the RSA to be ready to say this piece of mm -hmm. this set or this piece of the other set is more strict because we will, we will probably have to do that method for the uh, potential application. Yeah, just, just to be happen. prepared. Yes. Uh, it, yes. it might turn out we might just yeah. squeeze by getting yeah. this yeah, but I think there are going to be several places where the RSA is more strict than the than our old 1980 whatever regulations. So we'll so we'll we'll put together something for that. Um, just to update you, the zoning board has received an application for a special exception from. Center State LLC, which is the owner of the property off West Street. And Daniel, Daniel Lucchetti is the agent representing uh, Mr. Hiltz. So they have asked for a special exception. The procedure, so that is scheduled for October 8th, which is the ZBA meeting in October. The process that there, that is likely to be needed at that meeting is first the ZBA will have to determine if it is an application which is likely to have regional impact. That is the first question that they are going to have to answer. Then the second, and they do that before they accept the application as complete. So they make the determination that of regional impact first. And if it, if it and deems as to have regional impacts, then they will not be able to accept the they application can, as complete. They can complete. accept. Yes, they can. They can, oh, they, they, can. Okay. they will determine whether it has regional impact. And part of that determination is what municipalities will be impacted. So if they determine it's regional impact, they then have to decide which municipalities okay. it will impact. It's not other abutters, but it's municipalities, right. yeah. the, broader, the broader group. Then they can accept at that meeting, they can accept the application as complete. But that is far, I believe, as the zoning board will be able to go because before they can hold the public hearing, the, not only the abutters get notified, but those municipalities, which were just identified at that meeting, have to have 14 days notice before the public hearing. So the public hearing will not be able to occur on that same day. So that would be probably scheduled for the November ZBA meeting, unless the ZBA- I don't know. Paul is aware, but when um, the market basket was going in, the Board of Selectmen received that uh, notice. Mm -hmm. Did we have any comments for right. uh, basically uh, night sky, the, the mm -hmm. lighting? Right. Um, for that particular for that, situation. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. And I think it was only one place yeah. in Ashland upon Blue Sky Drive that you would have 
yeah. possibility yeah. of seeing yeah. any um, illumination. Yeah. Now, if that whole pro zoning board process follows through the regional impact, acceptance of the application, uh, the full public hearing, and if they do approve the special exception, the next step would be for them to apply to the planning board. And we, the planning board, also have to make that determination as to whether it has regional impact. Oh, okay. That deter the ZBA determination does not automatically carry over. Okay, I thought it we make nope. We make the same, I thought it might too, but we make the same determination. Oh, it's and two again, separate boards, I suppose. Yes, two separate boards, yes, definitely. Now that brings me to the next item that's in your packet. You had another document for regional impact guidelines. Got it. The one that we handed out at the last meeting came from the planning division at, in Concord. That was kind of a generic description of no, what no, the this, RSA requires. This is much more. Yes. Thorough. Now, each regional planning commission, and ours is the Lakes Region one, can develop their own guidelines. And that's what this is. So this is, this is the guidelines that we can follow. It does have, it's got general explanation at the beginning. When you get to page three, turn to page three of this. Down. Okay. The last, sec the last section on page three, determining the potential for regional impact. These are the criteria that are on the R in the RSA. Yeah. Okay. LRPC has some other suggested criteria on page four. Okay, and this is a suggested the checklist. Che the checklist? Yes, mm -hmm. the checklist. This is suggested. Okay. Okay, we do have to, obviously the criteria in the RSA are our primary criteria. But the, this checklist from LRPC gives us some additional guidance, some additional questions we have. Some may be a little more detailed than the RSA criteria. Some be, may be a little more specific to certain situations. Um, so this, is, this gives us a little more background information on regional impact in the process. Um, and when we when that application, if it comes to us, when it, if and when it comes to us, we will look at both the, the RSA criteria and we'll look at the applicable ones under the LRPC checklist also. There may be some there. I thought this was easy to understand. Yes, and yes. I did like the, um, the, the points for determining regional impact and the ones that were in the checklist also. Yes, yes. And I believe it says somewhere here or on the other document that we had last week, if any one of the criteria, if you answer yes to any one of the criteria, consider it regional impact. And if it's, and they even say, if there's a possibility, err on the side of determining regional impact. Yeah. So at some point down the line, we may have to work with this document. So I wanted to make sure we had the updated one. Um, Paula forwarded me some questions. Uh, she's been thinking a lot, obviously, about this, this potential application. And she forwarded me some questions today that I will keep on our list of questions to consider when we, when the, um, project comes to us. Uh, a couple examples. Uh, let's see, what wastewater will be produced if water pressure is used to dislodge bedrock from the site? Uh, how, will the re how will the removal of bedrock affect the natural flow of water at the site? And would this affect municipalities surrounding the site? So she's got probably six or seven questions here, which are good solid questions that we will that I will, when we get to the point of considering the, the application, I'll put all of the, the thoughts that Paula has had 
any other thoughts that we've had for a list of questions that may be appropriate when the project comes to us. Okay, I think I brought one up to you about the uh, attractive nuisance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how would they secure the site? Yeah, attractive nuisance and what kind of security? And um, the stabilization of uh, the uh, terrain. Yes, yes. And that was a question that uh, Mr. Lucchetti asked at the, um, that informal consultation that we had. Is, is, there, what, is there any way we can find out the um, exact slope on site? My thinking, my thinking is apropos of destabilization, mm -hmm. um, whether it can, whether the slope is such um, that it uh, could start a potential small landslide. Right. Yeah, uh, I agree the, with you, Paula. The site plan that comes in will have, uh, will need to have contour lines on it. And the contour lines, the spacing, the smaller the spacing, the steeper the slope is, the wider the spacing, the more gradual the slope is. So that and you know, right now, right now yeah. we're in a drought, but if we were going through a wet period, it, it mm -hmm. that could be a potential hazard. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right now, I don't want to get into too many of the specific questions that we might have. Because then we no, that that one that one just occurred to me, so I just yeah, wanted it included. I'm glad. Yes, for, um, for later. Yes, definitely. Um, because I don't want to start talking about the project in detail without anybody here. Yeah. Without the applicant here, that's not. Yeah. 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 So, but I have kept track of of questions that we've had, and will continue to do so. Okay. Um, Okay, I think. Okay, now let's look at the rules of procedure that I included in the packet were last updated a couple years ago, I think. 2018. Yeah, I, got those, I got those yes. in front of me. Yes, and um, I don't know. I, I apologize. Paula, if we, if I hadn't given you a copy of this. Um, no, I've got it right here but, in front of me. You gave it I mean, to me in the, in the packet. But I mean, before, to, before this meeting, you should have had it from the beginning. I apologize if you didn't. Um, don't, don't worry about it. I, I looked it, I looked it over before this meeting, yeah. so I'm up to speed. I think they're fairly clear. Are there anything, anything in there that people have questions about or see? Can we, can we change anything? Yes, we can. Okay, because no. this okay. is this is a document that we amend. Um, we make the amendments to it. Yes. So Those number are, six. The okay. Members must reside. I think we should uh, use the term domiciled. Okay, must be domiciled in. Yeah. Okay. Okay, on page two with. It, the duties of the secretary. Um, it was to fulfill such duties as the chairman may specify. Um, well, it says the different things to the secretary unless delegated to the board's agent. Uh, some of the those duties, um, Susan would. Right. We do uh, have the option of delegating yeah. some of those. Um, yeah. So something. Uh, so it, is the duty my specify? And I just where would we fit it in the sentence? Oh, the, uh, these may be delegated to the board's agent. Let's specify. Uh, where do we use the land use board's assistant? Uh, I first I had that, but I think as you go on, um, I, I didn't want to think it was. Mm -hmm. um, if we didn't have a land use assistant, it could be the building inspector or. Well, they, I, this is the first time I've read this document. Yeah, so. yeah. The second, the secretary duties relate pre primarily to the record keeping, keeping mm -hmm. attendance and minutes of the meeting. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see a situation where a building inspector might be given um, duties. I think it said somewhere before it, it had the duties of the secretary. Um, I think it's up in the first part of the members. It was like, like the secretary shall forward to the municipal court for recording the appointment and election and expiration dates of the terms of each member of the board. See the, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, in case we, oh, well, in case we had a town planner, I, I don't know. I just, um, well, if, if that position changes, we change our rules of procedure. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. This, <laughs> let's represent oh. what we have now. Okay. <laughs> uh, then under meetings, it says that we meet at the Ashland Elementary School. That has to be stricken. Yes. I, yes. I, I noted that as well. In, in more than one document, we have that. Um, we could say something about um, the official list of meeting times and locations is on the website. On the and website. We can, something along that line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was that it. I think, I think that also was in. It's on the application form. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and the, in one case, I think it's I think it's subdivision. Um, the time needs to be changed. You've got it at yes, seven o'clock. Yes, yes. When we get to that, yeah. Seven o'clock. So oh. The six thirty here is correct, and it's the yeah. first Wednesday and the fourth Wednesday, yeah. and we'll yeah. just make that. Um, we'll change that last sentence. Okay. Anything else? That's all I found. Okay. Did I don't think have... I found. I don't think I found anything. Okay. Um, the one thing we do need to add here somewhere, and I've got to look at. I may have to look at a couple other towns' rules of procedure, but we need to get in here some reference to determination of regional impact. Oh. Where would we put that under? Uh, that may come in to... Application for... Like, it could, it, that's a possible. I'll have to look at wording there. Because that we are really supposed to, at the beginning of any application, whether it's a site plan review or subdivision application, we're supposed to ask that question, which we have not in the past. Granted, we have not had... It's been quite a while since we've had any complex, really complex mm -hmm. applications that would address that. But I think we need to put that on our radar as a standard question to ask. So we'll have to put that, we'll put that in here somewhere. I, I guess it um, probably applications is the only it place may I be. Um, yeah. That may be, I think that's probably the best place to put it. We may have, I may have to reword a couple of the other Where are you items in to there. In? Somewhere within applications for subdivision and site plan yeah. review. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. I, I don't see where you can mm -hmm. put it in the sentences we have now. It might have to be a standalone. A, a new, a new a item under that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It it might it might be with the um, um, checklist that we've seen for regional impact. It may need mm -hmm. a section of its own. It could, yeah. We'll take a look. Yeah. So, so that the so that the applicants will understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it's part of the application process, but it's something they need yeah. to look at separately, yeah. possibly. Yeah. <clears throat> So we'll work that into our rules of procedure somehow. This this is a document that we use. Yeah, this is an yeah. internal yeah. document. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice one other little typo on page four down under reconsideration. Third line starts with the word oh, the and. Been crossed it's crossed out. out. Yes. <laughs> we'll delete that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think next meeting, I'll come back with the with a clean copy with a clean copy, and then we can, 
and it does if you look at the very end under amendment at the very yeah. end uh these can these are amended by a majority vote of the planning board members at a, at one of our public meetings yeah. so that's a fairly easy process so we'll take a look through that um well, next item we had a very good copy you know um document to work with in the we didn't have to start from scratch right right and that was we i think we did quite a few revisions back in 2018. uh application for site plan review okay yeah that's got the that's got the ashland elementary school at the bottom of yeah. the page yeah yeah anything at the top in section one I've got a couple suggestions. Um, okay. The line up in section one where it says telephone number. Yep. Add, I think we ought to add email address at the end of that line. Okay. And move that line up to under the mailing address. Mailing address. Yeah. Yes. So yes. the name, mailing address, telephone number, and email are all together. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. That makes sense. And one other thing I noticed in section one where it has property zone it says check one yes if we were doing the excavation site right now we would have to check rural residential and might depending on where if that property were in a particular place some things we would also have to might also have to check PEMI overlay or squam overlay mm -hmm. so checking one isn't may not oh, be okay. enough <laughs> I, was just saying, yeah, I think right. we should um, say check all, say but all apply. that apply Check all yes. that apply. Yes. And there are some lots that span two zones. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was what I saw up there. Section two, we've talked about the meeting information down the very last paragraph. Um, we've got the first and fourth Wednesday, and we've got 630. And I think in this case, just cross out the sentence. Mm -hmm. It says meetings will be held at the Ashland Elementary School unless other noticed. Just eliminate that sentence. Because yeah. it does mention that a complete list of scheduled meetings is available at the town office or on the town website. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, page two. Anything you've noticed there that needs fixing? Um, oh, mailing address. Now, the, the abutter list is the list that we use for sending out the notification oh, postcards and note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's why. So it's the t for each property, it's the tax map and lot number, the name of the owner, and their mailing address, which may not be the physical address there. Yeah, and it could be a yeah. PO box. Too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I thought about adding somewhere right at the top of that list, something about print or type, so that we can read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's Please true. write legibly. <laughs> yes. Um, geez, boy, it, it's going to come to a time we're going to want these all done electronically. Well, there are towns that, um, as part of their application, that they must have one, they require the applicant to provide three sets of mailing labels with all this information already on it. Or sometimes oh. they do that. I've seen that. Well, I mean, I watched Susan cut out the little tiny strips of paper. Yes. And things and was put yeah. them on. And when we've done it, you, uh, a lot of times Eli has done it here at home in the past for both planning and zoning board. And he has the uh, label sheets and he mm -hmm. uses the template. And it's, it is generally, I think, three labels that you need for each notice. Yeah. 
So there's some towns that require that. I don't know whether we're there yet. I don't know whether we want to try that. Um, but it is an option. <laughs> you know, um, maybe keep it yeah. on, on the radar. Mm -hmm. we don't, we've only got really three months left in this year. Mm -hmm. um, if we start seeing mm. more than a few come in. Yeah, yeah. That we can mm -hmm. reconsider that. Yeah. And again, this is a form that we can change any time. We can update as we need it. I'd 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 at least put it on a on a discussion agenda sometime mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Because I think technology is going in that direction and right. Um, oh no, there's nothing worse than not being able to read handwriting. Mm -hmm. and yes. The exactly. numbers are not clearly yeah. legible, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, that's not <laughs> our job to look. Up this stuff. Right. Yeah. The yeah. And it's and it's the applicant who will know uh, who is who his abutters mm -hmm. are. Yeah. And what the correct uh, mailing address yeah. well, should be. And it is actually it is the responsibility of the applicant to get the abutters names and addresses. Now that the and office is, is back open, they can make an appointment yes. and come in yes. and do it themselves. Yeah. It is actually their responsibility to do it yeah so if there's an error it doesn't reflect on the board and there's supposed i almost think within the rsa it says something about the how how recent the list has to be that they pull the information from i'll have to look that up yeah yeah. The other thing I've noticed in the past that people, um, and it, the owner of the property is the one mm -hmm. that has to apply. They can name an agent. Yes. The agent is not mm -hmm. the owner of the property. Right. And right. that's the same with mm -hmm. building permits and yes. DES yes. permits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why on the front page we have property owner mm -hmm. as the first block to fill out and then we have the place for the agent. Yeah. Okay. So, and then professionals on the, on page three, after all the butters, if you go back to the top of section four on page two, under the description, uh, this application must include the correct names and addresses of all abutters and any professionals consulted in the preparation of this application. For example, engineers, architects, land surveyors, and soil scientists. So that's what would be listed under the professionals. So whoever prepares that site plan mm -hmm. and anyone involved in developing any professional. If it's a wetland area, a soil certified soil yes. scientist yes. has to mark it out. Yes. You can't just eyeball it yourself and right. They, they yeah. So they are considered in the broad ca broad category of abutters. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then section five is the fees. Uh, $100 per application plus $10 for each notification. Is and that the notif low? No, it's still slightly over what the cost is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It still covers You're not supposed to be generating revenue you just know but it does cover the cost yeah. yeah and that the number of required notifications includes all the property owners agents of butters and all the professionals okay and there is that little asterisk note at the bottom that if we require the applicant to provide additional information through professionals, they are responsible for paying those fees for those professionals for that advice. Yeah. And okay, page four. Uh, 
I would like to make one change on page four, in item D. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying the applicant, replace it with the word owner. Oh, even though the applicant is a, is the owner, we don't use the word applicant anywhere until we get here. Oh. So just to make the connection between the first page and this page. Yeah. Yeah. The language and yeah. and also the in E. Applicant owner instead of applicant. Yeah. And downward has the signature place again replacing applicant with yeah owner. Owner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um the one below it co owner. It, yes, uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Owner or can say owner again. Some place some properties they've got multiple owners. Yeah. So that would also cover cover any partnerships. On the left page, like that. Right, that's right. On the street here. No. Pardon me, Kathleen. On the last the... page, it says property owner. Thing. Right. Yes. And I would like. To, I think we should add print name after the signature. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some people like to use just those initials. I believe I saw I, that. Or I squiggle. <laughs> yes, squiggle. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So those are all in a really uh, all relatively minor changes. Yeah. Nothing real. But it does. It polishes it. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Consistent language. Yeah. And some of the same things on the application for subdivision. Um, yeah, and block in section one, we add need to add the line of telephone and email. It's not on there at all. And I think we'll just make the top part of this exactly the same as the top part of the site plan review application. So this is uh -huh. the first section and both of them are consistent. And again, check all that apply. Uh -huh. um, Section two, um, one little thing. Back on the site plan application, when we told them how many plans to submit, we said eight copies, 122 by 34 and 711 by 17. And then we said, in addition, an electronic copy of the site plan must be submitted. We never changed that on the subdivision application. We have May for electronic copy. Down under section two, the third line. Mm -hmm. in the first oh, yeah, get rid of the, yeah, don't give me yeah. okay. Change it to must. must. It's time. Yeah. It's time that all of this, all of these things are done electronically. Yeah. Um, everything else is the same there. Again, this one we need to fix. Uh, Paula noted the seven o'clock. We need to change that to six thirty, and instead of saying the last Wednesday, it will be the fourth Wednesday. That's right. Yeah, first Wednesday at six thirty, and fourth Wednesday at six thirty. So we'll fix that. Again, just to be con the language will be consistent with what's on the uh, site plan application. And most and section four again we'll just make that consistent with the other application. Say right again. Through. Section four, the abutters and professionals list. We'll just make sure that's consistent with the other application. Any wording? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, section five. There's one thing here we need to double check on. And I mentioned it to Susan the other day. We'll have to. It mentions under fees, section five, it mentions a registry filing fee of $26. And then it also mentions in the asterisk a separate the check -chip. for 25 for L-chip. We, we need to double check those fees to see if there's, because it's been a long time since this form was looked at. 
So we need to just make sure those any fees that are mentioned are current. G R C D. It should be yes. It should be G C R D. Okay. Grafton, Grafton County Registry of Deeds. So it should be G C R D. I saw that. <laughs> I think that was, yeah. Other one. No, that's not on the other one. Yeah. And, no. and do we do we have any way of um, putting on the uh, actual um, properties within the town? I don't know how many times I've gone to meetings. Um, well, one fairly recently. We didn't know the property existed. It wasn't on our existing roll. Oh, the 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 one on um, off Wind Street. Yeah, um, but I've 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 noticed I've noticed there have been other meetings where, for for whatever reason, either the property we didn't know it existed, or for some reason it wasn't on the rolls. And well, I was wondering if there was a procedure going forward. That's the where we would right. make sure that these, uh, that's, these properties are. Yeah. I think that's something that we will watch very, now that you bring it up, we'll watch that very carefully from meeting mm -hmm. to meeting. Every time a piece of property comes up, we will do what we can to make sure that we have the appropriate and tax they, map and lot number. And they're yeah. identified appropriately. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now we often, I use, <coughs> a lot of times I use the lists on the website um, if you go to the forms and documents page mm -hmm. under the town clerk, there are three property lists. There's one list in order by owner's name. There's one list in order by physical address. And there's one list in order by tax map lot number. I will often go to those and cross check and then find it on the tax maps themselves. But we'll have to, yes. Good point, Paulo. Let's be very careful that we do have right identification information. And if we find a piece of property that that is missing, even when we look at those lists that we can't find <coughs> identification for, we'll let people know. Paula, when I reviewed yeah. the information, you, it was as the people who paid their back taxes, they were handwritten in above the name and mm -hmm. on, on, on one year, that na the names were close together and the next, it wasn't transferred over. And then it just, mm -hmm. dis that's how it disappeared. Yeah. It was a manual uh, mm -hmm. login that uh, yeah. <coughs> didn't get trans transferred over the next year. Okay, but we'll watch. I The last year or two, I've gotten updated lists for the website a little more frequently than we had in the past. Um, well, when we get the GIS. It will, that will become, it make it easier. Year. Yes. Mm. We, we'll probably have, we probably should have a meeting where we just stare oh, yes. at the glory of <laughs> when that com When that you know, comes online, yeah. we will learn how to use it. Yes. yes, yes. We will. Yeah. And I think it will make everybody's mm -hmm work easier yeah yeah uh section six on the subdivision application again to make it similar to the other application we just looked at i'll put a line in front of the a b c d etc with the direction to initial each one of them as we have on the other application say again uh, initial on the other application in section six, where we have the A, B, C, D, et cetera, uh -huh. there, was a, there was a direction that says initial each item below. And there was a line, a, a line in front of A, a line in front of B, I a see, short yeah. line, yeah. And we will add that here, again, to make it consistent. Yeah. And again, um, the same changes at the very end for the signatures. And that should take care of that form. So then what will... Um, 
you're yep. running into the same thing of um, uh, under under E under the application signatures. Mm -hmm. If you yes. don't have them printed out, are you going to be able to read, to, read the right. legible I'm going signature? To, yes, I will again add print name, uh, mm -hmm. direction, uh, change applicant and owner, make that swap. Um, yeah, I just didn't, didn't yeah. see it here. So. Yeah. Yeah, that has to be. Okay. So again, once we've got one form set, any of the common sections will be exactly the same across the forms. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so that, so I'll come back. Maybe one of the meetings in October, we'll come back with the redone forms, take a vote on them when they're all set. Uh, we do have to vote on approving the forms, and then we pass those on to Patsy, and they okay. become the, they become the new forms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The last thing I just tossed in for information: um, the site plan checklist, and on the back subdivision layout checklist. Those come from pretty much from the building regulations, if I remember okay. right, or the, and the subdivision regulations. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Um, do we need to note somewhere that these uh, designs surveys must be done by a licensed surveyor? Uh, we'll look at wording in various places. Um, if it's in, just, let's see. Okay, the site, the site plan review regulations, which is where the site plan checklist comes from, that has to be, that can be amended by the planning board. We can amend the regulations ourselves. Um, I just know from the past that we've had an engineer had plan yes. that yes. the end, since. Mm -hmm. Some of us were familiar with the property. We knew the plans did not match what was actually yes. physically there. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll check some of these documents, the subdivision and site plan review documents and these checklists and see, make sure we've got the right wording in those places. I'm just making a note right now regarding um, license surveyor, yeah. Yeah, and the other thing we noticed, they said mm -hmm. certain vegetation was there and it wasn't. Yes. Um, and yeah. the other thing Susan spoke to me about, and a lot of this is shoreland, uh, the amount of impervious surface that mm -hmm. occupies the lot. And I, be, uh, we don't, mindful of that. Yeah. yeah, but we don't have any language, li language or limits about that anywhere. I mean, um, I suppose yeah. we could adopt uh, what DES, mm -hmm. what percentage DES yeah. require. Yeah. Now, changing any of the language in the site plan regulations and subdivision regulations do not have to go to warrant article. Oh, good. They, we can change them. I think we probably have to have a public hearing okay. for ourselves, okay. but they do not have to go to warrant article. Okay. which will make it a, a little yes. um, See, less cumbersome easier. less cumbersome in making yes. whatever changes we think are appropriate. Mm -hmm. So that's, so we need to look at um, licensed surveyor language and impervious services. Yeah. Okay. Do we need uh, to get into setbacks in that? Those are in the zoning ordinance, and those can only be changed by one article. Yeah. I want them. Yeah. I want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are longer process to change. Yeah. And I don't no, know. No, just I was just um, putting it on my checklist, and mm. and that it yeah. isn't here. But as you say, it may be. It, as you say, it's under zoning board. So. What the what the. Um, the zoning regular, the setback numbers criteria are in the zoning ordinance, whether we should 
adjust the site plan checklist as to what we want to see on the site plan, we may want to look at that, revise the list, what should be included on the site plan. And does it mention anything? No, I think often we do want to see the setbacks delineated on the site mm -hmm. so that we can tell. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I was thinking. Yes. And that would uh, yeah. give a heads up to the applicant um, mm -hmm. that what, he, what his conception is mm -hmm. does not take into account um, the uh, setback uh, regulations under zoning ordinance um, apropos of the shed he wanted to put back in the in yeah. that back yeah in type, the type of thing. Sense. yeah the other thing i have not seen on either of these are boundaries of any overlay zones something else to think about hmm. but we'll we'll go over this some other time in more detail but i just oh, yeah. wanted to <laughs> Yeah. Substance input will be helpful. Yes. 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 And hopefully within yes. the month she will have as we were talking right now, she's considered homeless. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a, a, an address. I know. <laughs> okay. The only other let's see, couple a couple little announcements. Um At our next meeting, we did receive a home occupation application from the uh, JAMS business mm -hmm. on River Street. So that will probably be on the agenda for our October 7th meeting. Um, home occupation from who? On River there's Street, a, on Jams and Jelly. There's a jams, little Jams and Jelly uh, oh, business okay. on River Street. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Yep. yes. You mentioned that a couple of meetings ago. Yes. And that came back in response to that letter that we sent out. Yes, that letter. Okay. Yes, it worked. Yep. Yeah. So okay. that will be, that should be on the next um, um, October 7th meeting. Um, the only, uh, I, I believe everything on that application was filled in, except they didn't know how to get a sign permit. That was, yes, I did a quick glance. And it was filled out, as you said, it was filled out completely yeah. with one question. Yes. And that's an easy question to let them know about. We've got to, we have yeah. to let people know that this is relatively mm -hmm. an easy process. Yes. Yes. Money. yes. Yeah. So we'll have that. Um, Kathleen, I talked to you about giving us a little brief overview of some mm -hmm. DES terminology. We often hear about alteration of terrain permits. We hear about the PBN permit. Um, and there may be a few other standard phrases that we often hear in reference to site plans. At our next meeting, could you give us a little, a quick little tutorial? I could. I'm um, hoping that, hoping, hoping that we can meet then we could bring up the DES website and everybody can see. Okay. How to you how to negotiate. Like how to remember I gave you the little tutorial yes. last and year. And how to look up something. Yes. Yeah. That yes. you can look up each mm -hmm. division and yeah. get the information yeah. in that way. Yeah. We also mm -hmm. can direct applicants to go to that website. Yes. Uh, I yes. have I discussed with you quite a while ago how we needed to eliminate that DES uh, information on the town website because it was outdated. It was yes. obsolete. And I need that, to get the right links and the right information up yes, there. Yes, we have, yes. we should probably have the, uh, the email address and the phone number because DES has a, um, a person on duty. Mm -hmm. They have to, if they can't answer the question, they connect you to the department that can. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. You know, is yeah. what, 20 some mm -hmm. divisions. Yeah. Um, but what I'm thinking about is just the terms that we okay. hear yes, because frequently, they changed. frequently within applications that we get. Um, not that we are going to 
need to know all the details about them. But just no, no, quick. But if you see it, like PBN now, I think yes. they, they changed it to, oh, they add, added, uh, as I say, SPBN, a standard PBN, I think SPBN okay. yeah. is like, why? People were yeah. just getting used to this vocabulary. Now you go and change it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just a, a brief little vocabulary. <laughs> quick lesson. Um, uh, do we need to do? Do we need to do anything with the National Historical Society? Uh, that may. Be, I will check that. That may be up again. Six, I'll check sixty it days yeah. would be the end of October, I think. Yeah, maybe it may have been, maybe the last meeting in October. But I will check on that. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, because they've passed the year anniversary now, and mm -hmm. um, you wonder if it's still sitting on somebody's desk. I think, yeah. On the I bottom think. of the pile. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, I don't have anything else. Well, Mardine, I think we got yes. through an awful lot tonight. Yeah, yeah. we did. With, with. Not too, not heavy stuff. Right, the, the minor <laughs> changes to yes. clean it up. Yeah. Have the language consistent, yeah. Professional document. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, I will adjourn the meeting. Okay. I'll and second thank, it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>